Okay, so I'm just here with Solo this morning, and I wanted to make a little video here just to walk his owners through how we use the training uh, to move him through the house, how we like to start the day with him, and how we're keeping him in a kind of a calmer state of mind as we uh, as we work with him from like the start of the day kind of thing, right? We're starting this day off with the right mindset and uh, keeping that mindset throughout the day. So um, he's doing a little bit of whining right now because I'm talking to the camera and not letting him out, but I like he's relaxed. I like that he's laying all the way down there. Now what I can do is I can release him from the crate. So first thing we're gonna do before I release him, I've already done it, but we're gonna put the e-collar on him, make sure our remote is turned on. So we turn our remote on by holding this button here, and then you make sure your e-collar is on by touching the two red dots together. There's a red dot on the actual collar itself, and a red dot there. You'll touch those together to turn that on. Making sure everything is on before you put it on the dog. Opening your crate, if you need to, close the crate door on your dog and tell them no until they settle down so you can apply the e-collar. I won't suggest telling the dog to down or telling the dog to sit or really giving any commands until you've put the e-collar on. And uh, the first couple times you do that, that might be, you know, he might be a little bit excited, so you might have to work around that um, until the e-call is on. And you can actually provide a correction or some accountability for the command you give. So don't be telling him down, you know, 10 or 15 times before that e-caller is even put on. The e-caller is going to go on first, okay? I would also recommend here, probably for the first week or so at home, that he has a leash and uh, his prong collar on uh, once you let him out of that crate. So just putting that leash and prong collar on. Uh, when you let him out of that crate so you can use that to move him through the house and guide him a little more successfully and physically manipulate him if you need to. But uh, the e-collar will be there too and you will be able to use that um, and we're going to do this all off leash right now so you'll see what that looks like. But again, just uh, to keep things successful at home, shh, no, using that leash, uh, using that leash to start with is going to be really helpful. So I'm going to release him here. I'm going to release him with a recall command. Solo, come. Good. And then I'm going to put him in a sit. Solo, sit. Good. And I can say hi to him. Then we're gonna heal him through the house, okay? So heal. Now that's our heal command. So that's his loose leash walk command or his off leash walk command. He's supposed to follow, no, sit. And now we wait at stairs. So I'm not gonna keep him waiting too long. He's probably gonna go to the bathroom, but we make sure the dog, no, are waiting at the stairways. And uh, practicing just good, good manners at these thresholds, not rushing through the house, not racing me up to the back door, heal. And keeping him calm. Now, like, again, like his owners will know, um, this is a totally different dog than the one that we came, that, that came here, right? Uh, he's, he's doing incredibly well right now. No, if he starts to get ahead, I'm just going to mark that with a no and correct on my e-collar. No. Good. He's going to rush a little bit ahead here because he's excited to get to the back door. At the back door, we're going to have him sit solo. Sit. Good. Wait. We're going to have him wait. And then we're going to release him by opening the door and releasing with our uh, release cue. So I'm going to open the door all the way and correct him if he decides he wants to rush out. I will give him the opportunity to make that mistake. Again, this is why a leash is important the first week at home, because if he, no, if he blows past you here, you're either gonna have to really step into his space or basically go catch him, and we don't want that to happen. We don't wanna do that. So yeah, letting that leash drag, whether it's a slip leash, even from his flat call or something, just something you can maneuver him with and control him a bit with. So I'm gonna release him here solo. Good, break. When we release them, we always wanna get eye contact. So I say the name wait for eye contact and then release from the door, okay? So that's how we get him from crate to the back door for his potty break this morning. So now he's out here, we can play this morning. We can, uh, you know, I can let him potty out here, just run around. Usually I'll let the other dogs out here to run around with him too, do a little social. So you can kind of, you got options here, right? If you just want to let him out for a potty break, that's good too. Or maybe like a morning play session or something. Anything like that is really, really good if you get the time to fit that in. I will typically do, like I said, a social or a play session just a short one, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes kind of thing, right? And then uh, from there, he's gonna come back inside and then he's gonna go onto his place bed, right? And then on his place bed there, I can uh, I can gear him up with his leash and collar, uh, things I need for his walk. I can, uh, you know, do what I need to do. I don't need to go out for that walk right away, but basically let him out for this potty break here in the backyard. And then on the place bed inside for a little bit to just relax for like maybe five minutes. And then what he's gonna do from there is we're gonna go for our morning walk. And that's kind of what the schedule we want that to look like when he goes back home um, with some ex to some extent, right? You know, if you need to go for just that morning walk, as soon as he comes out of his crate, instead of taking him out to the backyard or whatever you guys got going on, whatever your situation is, that's perfectly fine. Just keep the structure, right? Just make sure you heal him from, you know, the crate to the door, put his leash and collar on, and then same thing at the front door if you're going for your walk. Just practice that threshold stuff, right? Don't let him rush up and down the stairs in front of you um, or race ahead of you, you know? 
All those little things make a huge difference if we're trying to set our dogs up for okay, success. So we're just gonna call uh, Solo inside here. So um, this is an area where uh, a lot of owners have some some contention with their dogs, trying to get them in from the backyard with that recall. So. Just tapping on the stimulate or sorry, the uh, the tone button there. Sit, good boy. And that tone button is our recall command, so I can tap on that tone, and when he hears that, he's expected to come and find me, the handler. Uh, I can give him that recall, of course, there too, if I want, just by saying solo come or a combination thereof. Uh, important though, if I don't hear him coming when I hit that tone button, I'm gonna hit the stimulation to prompt him to start moving, and then just tap that tone button again, right? Tone, 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 stim, tone, tone, tone. <laughs> Recalling inside, solo, sit, good. So we're gonna put him on the place bed over here. So I'm gonna say solo, heel. And we're gonna walk over to the bed, no, heel, good. Just correcting him for rushing ahead a little bit. Solo, place, good boy, nice, place, <laughs> good boy. solo, down, good. <laughs> He actually, he struggles with this bed a little bit and it's because of the, uh, it slides out from underneath him when he gets off of it. So if he gets off too fast, he will like rush out from underneath it and the bed will slide out and it spooked him a little bit. So he's not necessarily hesitant of it, um, but he definitely takes his time getting on there and he's pretty careful once he's on it. But he's really good at holding that down position there. So um, just making sure like maybe put it on some carpet if you got like a carpet pad or something for him there for that place command. But basically we're gonna give that place command. We're gonna walk up to the bed, point to the bed, we're gonna give that place command, I should say, walk up to the bed and point to it. So, you know, walk up here, say solo place, point to the bed and guide him there. And if he doesn't uh, get on there right away, you're just gonna tap on the e-collar. You're just gonna say place, tap on the collar. Until he starts to get up there, you're gonna tap on it, turn it up, tap on it, turn it up, until you prompt him to get on there. If he seems confused or hesitant, um, again, leash is critical for that stuff because then you can just use that leash to help guide him up onto that bed. So. Um, that's great though, he's doing really good with this. So now we've got him on the place bed here. We can move throughout the house. We can go into the bathroom quick if we need to. We should be able to go, you know, do something uh, in a different room for momentarily, not for long periods of time necessarily. The place bed should be, you should be monitoring the dog for sure on the place bed um, frequently. So not like going to have a shower or anything like that. If we're doing something like that, we're just going to most likely put the dog in the crate during that time. But the place bed can definitely be used as you move throughout the house or maybe you need to make a coffee or something in the morning sit down and read the newspaper or whatever um, you can do that while your dog hangs out here on the bed and they are not roaming around causing trouble so using that place bed really frequently is going to be important we move it around the house we have a few in the house i got one in my office we have uh, one in the living room of course one here in the kitchen and you can just move one of them around if you need to even using them inside and outside if you want to just hang out on your front porch or something Put your place bed out there. Give him that down command on that on that uh, place bed. Help him relax a little bit. We can, of course, just put him into a down stay. He does know that command, and we do use that frequently. If I want to move him into, say, the living room right now, and there's no bed in there, I can just put him in a down stay. If I want to sit on the couch, uh, and I don't want him up on the couch with me, I can just put him in that down stay away from me. Or again, that place bed command is nice. It keeps him comfy, and they know they know what it means. They know that it's going to be a long duration. So uh, use it, right? One other thing I'll show you here with the place command is gonna be the back tie. So we have a weight here in place. This is just a, like a 30 pound kettlebell. Honestly, probably not enough for this big guy. But uh, what we will often do is we'll take a leash, have a slip leash or even a leash with, on the prong collar preferably. Uh, for this guy it would be leash on the prong collar, tie it up to that, uh, that weight there or just something sturdy, right? A sturdy piece of furniture. You could of course put like a back tie or something in place in your house, like a hook or something. We definitely do that here and we have clients that do that too. Um, but just something sturdy that you can tie that leash to so he can only move a few feet off of that leash or off of that place bed. So he can only get like this far off before hitting the end of that leash and basically self-correcting, allowing you to go back and place him back in the command again and uh, put him in that downstay. If somebody knocks on the door or maybe we're having new company in or just working on new things like new levels of excitement within our house with him and we want to make sure we're really successful with that, the back tie is a huge, huge, uh, huge, huge part of that, right? So we would just put the leash on him, the collar on him, and we would just tie that securely to that weight there, leaving just enough room for him to get up, turn around and step a little bit off, right? And then again, we can keep him from self-reinforcing things like rushing to the door to bark or jump on people uh, or whatever the case is. So. 
use those tools, use those techniques. That back tie is going to be huge, huge, huge for this dog because he is quite impulsive. And it's going to take some timing and getting used to uh, correcting this stuff till he gets the, the point with you guys at home. So just keep that in mind. So he's on the play spread here. He's hanging out. We're going to leash him up here once he settles down a little bit. Again, he's just a little worked up. So I'm talking and staring at him and pointing the camera at him. He will settle down though. Um, we're going to release him off the place bed and we're going to kind of get him out for our morning walk here. So we're going to bring him out to the door again, practice our thresholds and uh, then we're going to um, take him out for that nice morning walk. So, you know, maybe a 15 minute, half an hour walk, depending on what, uh, what we're doing here and uh, taking him around the block a few times and uh, you know, keeping that walk nice and structured. And again, we'll show you what that looks like. So that's uh, good here for the place command. So you're just going to see if we can get him into that down, down, good. If I notice a dog is like really struggling on that place by command, panting, looking around, um, whining or whatever, I'm going to ask for a second down command and I can just uh, tap on that remote collar to enforce that, right? Give a little correction on the remote collar to help, help them settle down and reinforce this behavior here when he actually does begin to settle. So that's going to be good here. We're going to let him settle here. I'm going to stop talking to him and point the camera at him and then we're going to let him uh, relax and take him for a walk. So stay tuned for that.